Hello, it's uh, Ayan, the Makeup Mariachi, and I'm filming a video today to kind of catch up on life and like just, I guess, my trajectory. Um, and for a moment to reflect, because um, I'll, just, I'll just get into it. So I'm on this app called uh, Chaney, or Chani, I don't know what, how to pronounce it, but um, it's basically an astrology app. And it gives you like really detailed, you know, things about your transits and about like how planets are in relation to each other and stuff like that. And it's very personalized. But basically right now, at this very moment, um, there's a full moon going on in Pisces. And basically like there's, there's just like a lot of like, I guess, I don't even know, like transformation going on right now or something like that. But there's, like, some answers that, you know, I kind of, like, need to have for my life. It, it's even me, for me, it's like, okay, like, I'm not even completely understanding it, but I feel it, you know? And so, um, at the beginning of this year in March, specifically on March 13th, it said, look for what was happening on March 13th, um, and you'll find answers or whatever. And I was like, okay. Um, and I saw my calendar, and on that day was when I celebrated my uh 25th birthday i went to go um i went to a restaurant to see a drag show with some friends and that was like a couple days after my actual birthday right um but i just realized you know like it said there's like there's like a little journal feature in that app too and it says um the question said what were you working on or like what project were you working on or what were you doing six months ago that like, that you see now, like, you know, that you can reflect on or whatever. And I was, like, looking at that month, and I was, like, what the heck was going on? And so I, like, searched my laptop, you know, for, like, answers and to see what was going on. And that was the month that I had literally planned a post every single day. And that I was really, like, hustling for, like, being an influencer, right? Because that's, like, that's, like, what I really wanted to do since 2020, you know, with the makeup mariachi be an influencer, just kind of like be someone that gives non-binary Latinx, Mexican, brown representation uh, for like femmes and for people with beards to like, you know, watch and just be like, like, wow, like this person exists and they're like freaking cool. And, you know, and it's like whatever, you know, they're just like another cool person. That was really like my goal. And that month I just posted a bunch of, it was just like makeup stuff, you know, which is kind of been my whole thing since I started making mariachi. It's been lots of makeup, maybe not as much mariachi as I have like maybe envisioned. Um, and since then, I think literally like that, just that month was the only month I really like, like planned out posts and posted every single day, I think twice a day for like a week or something like that. Um, and it really helped boost me and it was great, you know, I was like, oh my god, I can like picture myself maybe doing this. But then it really, it was really hard to keep content going and like ideas and filming and creating because I, you know, I still have everything going on in my life, like with the mariachi and with my family and just like a lot of the places that I have to be, you know, all over the city all the time. And so it was like difficult after that to like, to like really keep it up. So I kind of, I, I took a, I made the post a little less and I was like consciously doing it. I'm like, I'm burning out. I need to take care of myself, all this and that. And, and then that's when, you know, in June, it was Pride Month and that's when Skittles reached out for me to be in their campaign. And that was amazing. And I was actually, that was in, I think May or like April or May. Um, and so that was amazing. I was like, oh my God, you know, like things are happening. And then literally after that, like literally right after that is when um, I just started to like not post anything, get like really burnt out. Somebody came into my life that um, really, really veered me off of my path. And that, well, that veered me off of my path, but that also gave me like forced me to really reflect on my behaviors and my patterns that I go into um, in terms of like affection and romance and lust. And I'm so, I've kind of still been in that 
uh, up until now, I'm like feel I feel like I'm finally maybe kind of barely exiting that stage. Um, and it's rough, and it, and it makes me really sad because, like, it's it's so difficult to recognize patterns, you know, that that you realize have been going on for like years, and then. Um, you know, to, like, uh, start to undo them, you have to be aware of them. And when you become aware of them, you're like, wow, why am I letting myself do this to myself? Like, I'm not that kind of person. Like, I would never let this happen to, like, any of my friends and any of that. Um, so why am I letting it happen to me, you know? And I'm going to get emotional, so just, you know, bear with me. <laughs> they appreciate you um, watching throughout this. Um, but that's actually, and that's actually part of it, you know? Like, being really in tune with my emotions being just uh, observing them like letting them happen you know like letting them pass and letting letting myself feel them because i feel like when things get difficult i just go into numbness and i don't let myself feel anything until i'm like done with whatever you know stage of my life and so i never fully like process things and then they keep coming up you know or like you know naturally shit comes up or like people come into my life and, you know, I go numb or I engage in behaviors that are just, like, not beneficial for me. And then I wonder why I'm, like, in this constant cycle, you know? And, and so it's, like, it's hard because part of it is, like, forgiving myself and, you know, noticing and being, like, I, I forgive you for, you know, doing this for so many years. That's all you knew how to do. And I want better for you. So let's, you know, let's do better. Um, that is, I think, one of the hardest part is just being forgiving with myself. Because I, I hold myself to a very high standard, I've, fig I've discovered. Um, and it's, it's just hard for me to, like, you know, g think of myself as, like, less than. Um, or, like, f forgive myself for, like, possibly being less than. Which is, like, you know, I'm just human, but it's hard. It's hard. It's just hard. <laughs> So, I've been working on that, um, and I guess, I, and I'm, I'm filming this video to, like, touch base with all of y'all because I really have been absent, you know? I, I have a ton, I filmed a ton of videos since, like, December, um, when my family got COVID, which was also, like, you know, I think definitely a wake-up call, and that's when I, like, really tried to, like, give it my all for, like, influencer stuff, um, and I filmed a bunch of stuff, and I just, and I, I think I've, I started to edit some of it, and they were, like, cool videos, but I haven't posted them, because I just really, like, I just lost so much motivation. I felt like everything I did, I was just so, like, scrutinous about it. Like, I was like, you know, what does this say about me? Like, very, very nitpicky, like, analytic, like, influencer stuff, which is, like, cool, but, like, I, you know, I, I'm trying to live... My life, like, for me, like, being, being an influencer is, like, just curating those parts of your life that, like, speak to an audience, you know, and that can help an audience and that can educate an audience. And, and I guess I was being way too scrupulous with all of the things that I did, you know? I'd be like, what does this say? I think I, f I filmed a review of um, the Selena series right before, you know, before it was going to come out again, the second season. <laughs> and... I was like, what does this say? Like, am I really saying what I needed to say? I was a little drunk when I filmed it too, so I like really said a bunch of th a bunch of things. And so I was like, you know, how are people gonna take this? Blah blah. blah. And I, it's it all comes from this, this like surface level motivation to not be messy, you know? Because on the surface, I've always been this person that's like has everything together that. Um, you know, is, is gorgeous, is, you know, well-kept and, and um, passive, I guess, and, like, silent, listens, a, like, good listener, you know, all these things that we, we see as, like, amazing traits, you know, but that really, like, erase the parts of us that are human, you know, like, shoot, I'm freaking emotional all the time because I don't let myself, like, really express that, you know, to, like, the people that I love or, like, even to the strangers that I'm around, sometimes and and I, and I just think that's so sad you know and I I don't want there to be another generation of kids where they feel like they have to do that you know um 
and so like I think <laughs> I think now entering this new stage of my life you know if we're gonna get all like metaphysical and existential about it I feel like I really, really, really want to show what it's like to be messy, you know, for someone that looks like they have it all together. Um, I think I focused so much these past few months and like maybe even years on, you know, wanting this perfect life that I've imagined for myself or like that has been like kind of forced onto me by society that I've like adapted. Um, with no room to like really you know to just be messy and explore i'm in my fucking 20s like oh god my therapist my therapist um I, oh, I i'm in therapy and I've, I've been talking a lot with my therapist about like literally everything and right now you know that i'm in this like flirtationship with this guy um and like still trying to find a romance and like you know being being messy in my in my love life I'm, you know, telling her all this, and I'm like, I think I feel, like, okay with some of it, you know, like, or most of it. Um, and she's like, I'm so glad, I'm so happy that you do, because this is the time to do it. You know, like, a lot of people, you know, it's part of discovering who you are. This is, like, the age to be messy. Um, and letting myself be messy is so important, and it's so good because I haven't let myself be messy for like a lot of my life. Um, and there's a big, big reason for that, but that's definitely for another video. I'm not ready for that right now. <laughs> um, but you know, like just letting myself live and act my age is <sighs> like, it's, I think it's part of me thinks it's ridiculous to say, but it's, you know, huge for me. You know, it's, it's huge for anyone. I think that's been living, with like these expectations all their life, you know, to just live and exist and just be who they are at their age. Um, so I really hope this is making even some kind of sense because I feel like there's a lot that I'm not saying that I really want to say, um, but maybe I'm not ready to say it yet. Um, however, like the overall sentiment is what I'm trying to get across, you know, so I'm trying to be messy. I'm trying to be someone that um, is okay just existing and putting myself out there, but still trying to put myself out there because I still have, you know, a story to tell. I still have things that I want to do with my life. Like, I, I have, like, such big dreams and hopes of, like, putting my, imbuing my story into a TV show, into a film, into um, an animated film. Um, writing a score, you know, continuing to write music, which is something I haven't done because I've just, again, expectations. Like, I've always had this, like, notion of what, you know, a composer is supposed to do and be. And even though I have a bachelor's in composition with a minor in music theory, like, I'm like, what does that even mean, though? Like, did I even earn it? Did I even, like, really showcase my you know, ability and my talent and stuff like that. And in some aspects, yes. Like, in some aspects, I'm super, super proud of what I've done. Like, I have two pieces published. Like, girl, that's... Like, to anyone, it'd be like, wow. But to me, it's really hard because I feel like I'm... I didn't earn that bachelor's, at least. You know, like, my time at, in school as a composer and stuff like that was just kind of like a farce. Or so like, you know, I was, um like, in, like very imposter syndrome, like, even post-graduation, which is just horrible to think about but like stuff like that you know like i i am right now like really kind of returning to my roots um and just being like what the fuck do i want to do with my life because our time here is freaking short like we literally we literally don't know when we're gonna die we don't know how much time is written in for us you know in this story of the universe um and so I don't want to, like, I don't want to go to sleep tonight knowing that I, you know, ha had things that I wanted to do that I didn't do. Um, and that's not to say, like, you know, you can, you can be secure in, like, leaving things for later because that's also very important, you know, is, like, exerting your boundaries over your capacity and over everything that you can do and that you know you're able to do, like... I, I'm talking about, because I'm, you know, I'm not a big risk taker. 
uh, overall, I'm a very big emotional risk taker, which is, you know, had its consequences because of heartbreak and all that. But in general, like, it's really hard for me to, like, really do things and, like, say things that I need to say. And so, well, excuse me. And so right now, I was working on um, some music stuff for the Mariachi. And, you know, I got this notification from my Cheney app and... I started just re-watching all the drag videos that I made over this past year and a half. And... And I'm just... So freaking proud of myself. For, you know, having that creative outlet during quarantine and for, um... For exploring that part of myself that I... I was honestly so scared of exploring, like, with drag and, like, femininity. It really, I think, helped me reach... A, a, a closer part of like who I am as a non-binary person, as an artist, um, and to like have people to do it with, like my sisters and my friends, and have my family support me all through all that is like just you know it's such a great blessing. I know not everyone has that, um, and so it's just like I don't know. It made me really just be like, what the hell am I doing? Like, what am I freaking doing? Like. I've really just been focused and thinking about this man that came into my life for the past fucking like four months. And it's consumed me. It's like given me like physical anxiety. Like I've had this really bad um, like gastrointestinal like stomach issue where I'm just like randomly like nauseous when I get anxious and I start to like dry heave like it's it's bad you know and i think right now like just admitting it is important but also i'm like i need to i need to fucking get help you know i need to go see my doctor and and like for some reason like i just haven't been wanting to because i'm like i can figure this out i can do this i can you know do it on my own like i've always been freaking doing this but i i, I need help you know and it's okay to ask for help and i need to tell myself that and i need to like instill it because it's it's I'm telling you, it's just so hard because I have gone through a lot of my life just doing things on my own because, you know, no, like literally I learned how to do that because a lot, a lot of what I had to like do like growing up, my parents couldn't help me with. And so I just kind of like kept doing that. You know, I just kind of kept doing things on my own, figuring stuff out and breaking down, you know, when I couldn't do it and then just like secretly breaking down. And I, you know, continuing to do that for years and years. And therapy has really, like, opened my eyes and just helped me just be like, I need help. I need freaking, you know, I need resources. I need to reach out. I need, I just, I need things. I deserve to have these needs met, you know? Um, so, we're, we're getting there. We're getting through it. Um, I just, I really just wanted to check in and just, you know, be here for some of y'all because I realized that, you know, as, as I grow, as I build my platform, you know, which is like a dream to like, you know, be someone that can like influence, have a good influence on the world. Like, I understand also that, you know, I have that responsibility of like being present for y'all, you know, like I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to continue the cycle of like, you know, absence and, like, abandon or perceived abandonment, you know, in, in people's lives, you know, especially if you're, like, you know, it, especially if I give you, you know, the the implication or, like, the sense of, like, you can count on me, like, I definitely have a responsibility to, like, be there for y'all, too, because y'all are there for me with y'all support and with everything that, you know, that you watch of mine and everything that you, like, just support me with. I, I really want to do that for y'all, too. So, we're getting through it. It's a, it's a really difficult emotional time, but I think... Like, I, like, I don't even think. I just know we're going to overcome it. I know we're going to come out better than ever. Um, and I know it's very cliche, and it sounds like, yeah, like, whoop de doo Like, you know, our, my problems are, like, real. Um, and they are, you know? And I'm, I feel that 100%. But... Just listen to me, like, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be fine. And if it's not, we have each other, 
You know, like, there's nothing in this world that can happen that we really can't get through. And I think that speaks to, like, our resilience as queer, as brown, as people of color. Like, we have endured so much and we have not, you know, we didn't have to, but we have. And it's fucking difficult and it's fucking awful and it's horrible. And, you know, sometimes I just be, I'm just, you know, sometimes I just think I'm like, hmm, do I really need to do this? Um... But there's so much left to experience, you know? There's so much left of my story to tell and of my story to, like, you know, happen, you know, for me to be able to tell that I'm like, I, I, I need to keep going, you know? I'll take a rest. I'll take a break. You know, it's okay to shut down from the world every now and then. Hopefully, you'll tell people ahead of time <laughs> um, or, like, while it's happening. But if even if you don't, I understand and... and and I wasn't okay with that back then, you know, like a while ago. But I understand now, you know, it's, it's part of being mature. It's part of being an adult is like knowing also when to take breaks and when to like, you know, realize that the world, like you don't owe anything to the world. You don't owe anything to anyone. Like you can just exist without having to like do something for someone or for something. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm existing. And I just, I just, well, thank you. You know, this ending has been long enough, but thank you so much um, just for all the support. And it's, it's only up from here, you know? We're in this together. I'm going to awkwardly turn off the camera now. <laughs> Goodbye.